Let's discuss the cell membrane. Okay, so cell membrane is what, so, so this is your cell, this would be a cell. We have the cell membrane, also called the plasma membrane. You have the cell nucleus. And here is your cytoplasm containing the various organelles that we just discussed. Now we're going to look at the membrane itself, cell membrane. So the, again, it's called the plasma membrane as well. Plasma membrane. It's made up, of, made up of two types of molecules. It's made up of proteins and lipids. So let's first discuss the lipids that make up the cell membrane. So lipids in the cell membrane come in two types mainly, okay? The first type are phospholipids, okay? So the phospholipids of the cell membrane form what we call a bilayer. They form a, a double layer cell membrane. So here you have phospholipids like right here. And here, this part of course is the phosphate group. And here are your tails, your fatty acid tails. So they form a bilayer such that again, the hydrophobic tails are hidden from the water while the phosphate groups are exposed to both the intracellular fluid and the extracellular fluid outside and inside the cell. We also have, and this, 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 this is about 75% of lipids. Then the, the next major group of lipids we have is cholesterol. Okay, so cholesterol usually is located between the fossil the phospholipids like this. This could be here, could be cholesterol. So here's cholesterol, cholesterol, cholesterol. Okay. And cholesterol, so let me make it clear. Phospholipids. Cholesterol now, its job there is to promote um, membrane fluidity. It allows for the membrane to be flexible, it can bend around corners as the cell need, need, needs to contort. That's a drop of cholesterol. And it, it's usually in between the fossil lipids along the cell membrane. And then there's also a smaller, a smaller population of lipids called the glycolipid. Okay, and that's basically referring to lipids in the membrane which are attached, attached to sugar molecules. Okay? And this kind of lipid structure helps to almost act as a tag on the cell membrane. It helps to identify as being self versus non-self. So those are almost like name tags on the cell membrane, your, your glycolipids. So tags there. Okay? So that's lipids. Let's look at proteins that also are part of the cell membrane. Proteins. In the cell membrane again, here's the cell membrane, it's bilayer of phospholipids. You also have In, in parts of it, proteins. Okay. So some proteins will span the cell membrane like this. This, this could be a protein here that crosses the entire cell membrane like so. Okay, that protein. So proteins that span the cell membrane, you call those your integral proteins. They cross the cell membrane. You have other proteins which are attached to one side only, usually on the inside of the cell membrane. Okay? 
Those are your peripheral proteins. Okay. And so these proteins play different roles. So I'm going to discuss in general what proteins do, especially when they are attached to or across the cell membrane. Okay. So roles of proteins in cell membrane. We have roles of proteins in the cell membrane. One, they can act as receptors, meaning this is your cell membrane. These proteins, okay, so this, this is the membrane. These proteins can sit like this. And their job is to respond to a chemical that may, that may want to come into the cell or attach to, to, to activate the cell. So receptors, receptors, respond to chemical stimulus on the cell. For example, you may take, you may take a medication. That medication needs to bind to receptors to, to have an effect. So, so that's the job of, of receptors. And, and, and receptors are almost always, almost always proteins. Okay? You also have Proteins that act as enzymes, all right? So, so in terms of enzymes, these enzymes can be used as using digestion, especially on the small intestine, we call it brush border enzymes. The brush border enzymes are attached, or they're part of the cell membrane and they're able to break down your food as the food touches them, okay? They also form what we call second messengers. They're involved in second messenger systems. These are systems that allow for chemicals on the outside to have an effect on the cell without coming inside the cell. And we'll, we'll hit that part later on in, 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 in the session, okay? So they form second messengers, and they also form channels or pores into the cell. So this is, say, a cell membrane like this, okay? So as channels, meaning the, the, the protein like that can allow things to enter the cell or leave the cell. So it's acting as a channel. A way for thing or a gate, a way for things to enter or leave the cell, and these channels can be open, meaning they're always open. So if things can just, if things are of the right size, they can pass in and out of the cell of the cell by going through to, to the gate, or they are gated or regulated, gated channels. So these gated channels come in three forms. Okay, so for gated channels. Some channels are controlled by the present by the, the the voltage across the cell membrane. So here, for example, the voltage may be say negative seventy millivolts. That's electricity across the cell membrane. And if it changes to say maybe plus thirty millivolts across the cell membrane then the channel will close, like so. Okay. So channels that, that open or close based on the voltage present are called voltage-gated channels. And these are very critical gates, especially in how the brain works, how muscles work. They rely on electricity to control their, their membrane permeability, okay? So the voltage-gated channels allow things in and out of the cell based on the voltage across the cell membrane. You also have channels 
that are ligand gated channels or chemical gated channels. And these channels here, the channel may be closed here, is closed. But then if something binds to it, again, like a receptor, it act, may, act, may act as a receptor. And when something binds to it, a ligand or a chemical binds to it, it's called, called it's a ligand. When it binds to the receptor, it then opens up. It can pass through. So we call those ligand gated channels. So that's how your drugs work. Your drugs that you take go in and act as a ligand to open and close channels on your cell membranes to alter cell function. Okay? And then a third type of gate that we have. is your mechanical gated channel. Here, the cell gates may be closed. And then if, if say, something may depress the cell membrane like this, maybe, maybe somebody touches you, and that will change the membrane shape. When that happens, the gate opens. So mechanical or physical changes in the cell's membrane will open or close the gate. So we call these your mechanically gated channels. So again, you have three types of gated channels. Channels gated by voltage, called voltage gated channels. Channels gated by chem the chemical that's around. So we call it chemical or ligand gated channels. And the channels are gated by the, 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 the physical structure of the cell membrane. It is being pushed on if I touch you. You know, you know that I'm, I'm touching you because that activity activates your mechanical gated channels. It changes the, 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 the structure and that will activate them. Okay, some more stuff about what, what some of some other roles that these um, proteins play. Some proteins act as carriers. Carriers. Meaning, if this is your cell membrane, the protein here is able to say, bind to something out here, bind to it, and bring it into the cell. So they're able to bind the things and transport them into the cell, so-called carriers. This is how we, for example, absorb, say, glucose out of, our, out of our urine, out of our urine stream. We pull it back out by using glucose transporters to catch it, bring it back in. So, and, and, and of course, those are proteins. You also have um, cases where they act as adhesion factors. Okay, so if this is one cell here, that cell will be anchored to another cell by these adhesion factors, okay? Things that anchor cells together, especially in the skin. Okay, so you can anchor cells together as one factor, or even, you know, viruses can attack cells by binding to adhesion factors on the cell membrane. So they're there. Then once they're attacked, then they can insert the material into the cell, okay? So adhesion factors, and then you also have, sometimes these proteins also, since they're, since they're on the cell membrane, right, they can also act as tags as, as well. So they can tag the cell. So again, identify the cells being self versus non-self, pathogen versus versus friendly cell. Okay, so those are the roles of proteins in cell membranes. We'll pause there.